everyone. Welcome to the Free White North. Uh, hopefully you're having a good day. Uh, I'm at the range today and I'm going to be doing a little bit of uh, long distance shooting. Um, it's really just some practice, not really long distance by any stretch. I've got some 200 meter gong set up downrange um, just to kind of have some fun and, and see if my, uh, my Kestrel ballistics and my range finder are dialed in. So that's what I want to talk about today is really just kind of uh, what equipment I'm using and what I'm using for my range finder and um, and then my entire shooting setup and my ballistic calculator. So this is a 6.5 Creedmoor on a Remington 700 barreled action. I believe it's a 5R tactical. Um, and I really enjoy shooting this rifle. It's fantastic. There's very little kick, especially in this MDT ACC chassis. The chassis is fairly heavy as it is, uh, the way it kind of comes stock. But the cool thing is that there's a lot of MLOC compatible channels here and, uh, and mounting points. So they ha I have these MDT weights here, and then I have also MDT branded channel weights inside that are also M-Lock as well, which are going to be easily removed. There's just a short, small little uh, cover plate here that allows you to uh, take them out and uh, then you can just unlock them here. And the cool thing is here, I have my Arca mount uh, um, bipod here as well. So it, I can easily move it back and forth, up and down and, and whatever I need to do. I have a um, Vortex Diamondback Tactical um, scope which is 6 to 24 AMRAD or Miller Radian. And I have a uh, Trigger Tech trigger. Just so you guys know, I'm sitting here obviously with the rifle. Uh, it is unloaded, there is no magazine in, and the bolt is completely out. It's, it's actually in my range bag right now. So there's nothing there. Um, and I have a, uh, a wee bad um, cheek crest here for this MDT uh, chassis. The one thing I want to talk about today is the kind of the rangefinder and Kestrel combo. I actually ordered this a while back and I haven't had a chance to really use it in the field a ton, but I have configured my rifle settings in here using the Bluetooth app, which is, this is the Bluetooth link enabled version. And with the Kestrel app, you actually put in all your settings, um, you get everything calibrated for, for your sight height, your bore height, um, muzzle velocity, what bullet you're shooting, and, and all those different uh, ballistic coefficients. And then it gives you all your rangings. The cool thing is it also gives you atmospheric readings as, as you guys are probably aware of these Kestrels. It gives you humidity, temperature, uh, atmospheric pressure, and obviously this little guy is the wind reading. So you basically take your thing and you're ready to read the wind, point it down range. It'll give you the actual direction, the compass direction of your target and your uh, wind reading for that particular moment kind of at, at your muzzle. Now the kind of cool thing now with the, when you pair it by Bluetooth with this uh, Bushnell Connex Elite One Mile is that you can actually take your reading, when these two are Bluetooth paired up, you actually take your reading and it instantly sends that reading for distance, so your range, as well as the angle, whether it's up or down, whatever, however many degrees up or down, and it sends that to your ballistic meter. As soon as that's done, your ballistic meter then calculates based off that information what your up and down and left and right adjustments are, your windage and elevation for your scope. So I have this all zeroed in at 100 yards. I have all my all my uh, scope settings kind of clicked in and I have it locked in for that zero and now we're ready to go. So I have my zero stops all set up and then we'll be able to shoot. So hopefully here we can uh, demo real quick kind of what this looks like and then uh, we'll do some shooting. So let's take a look real quick kind of what this looks like. So I have my, um, my Kestrel Ballistics here. I have it opened up. You can see the wind meter is spinning pretty good. There's a little bit of a wind here. Um, the one thing that here you can do is you get your target and your wind. I have my gun set up, my MDT ACC 6.5 Creedmoor. And then uh, you have the environment here. I can do a quick update. Uh, the one thing is like obviously 22 degrees Celsius right now. One thing you do really to get this thing going is you got your target. I already have it set for 201 meters. I just ranged it with this guy. So if I do this real quick, it'll update to whatever I'm pointing at. So it should read 216. Yeah, 216 meters. Right now, comes back and gives me my adjustments for elevation and for windage. Uh, for that particular reading. Now for wind, if I want to update the wind, all of a sudden there's a bit of a wind, I hold down this, uh, the red button here to collect the wind and that's saying you're obviously spinning up. There's a gust of about one meter, uh, one mile per hour. Um, and then that's that. Basically, that's all you need to do to kind of collect your environmental settings for that particular location that you're shooting in. And as soon as I go and adjust, now where's my uh, target that's right over there.
203 meters and it should come back and update it here. Two hundred and four meters. There we go. So it updated right there and it adjusted my uh, my windage, you know, sorry, my elevation by to zero point five nine from zero point seven one, whatever it was for mills. Uh, my wind is also now two miles per hour. So that's pretty much how you use that. And uh, let's do some shooting. That was a six inch plate on first shot, pretty good. Two for two. So this gave me 0.6 uh, mils holdover and uh, I was just basically just holding it down. I didn't have to adjust anything for such a short distance. I'm just doing my holdovers and my windage readings and it's uh, actually there's no wind right now. So I just basically just put it right down in the center and about five mils up. So yeah, good times. So one of the things that I want to talk about also is um, this uh, Vortex Diamondback Tactical 6 to 24. Um, first focal plane, milliradian, um, I think it's the EBR2C or something along those lines, uh, reticle. It's not illuminated. I mean, obviously you get an illuminated uh, reticle in some of the really higher end scopes and something kind of thousand to fifteen hundred dollars plus range. This thing was, um, I think it was five ninety nine Canadian. We got it here at the Calgary Shooting Center. Um, highly recommend those guys. You could definitely go in and do other stuff. Um, I was looking for something fairly inexpensive to get into long range shooting with, and I honestly, I don't think I could have made a better choice in that price point. Uh, the value is incredible. Uh, their lifetime, no questions asked, warranty. Again, people, you know, mock them for the warranty because, like, well, what's, what's you know, what do you need the warranty for if you never have to use it? If you make a quality product, then you never have to back it up. Well. There's lots of shitty companies out there that don't back up their products, so I don't know what to say about that. I mean, at the $600 price point, we're not talking about you know a $5,000 optic here. It's it's something that you can get started with. It's a really good entry level, uh, kind of medium to long range distance uh, scope. It's really good for hunting too, if you want to put on your hunting rifle. But I really love it. It's fantastic. I have never had a single issue with it. It holds at a zero really well. Um, like I said, it doesn't have kind of a traditional zero stop, but it does have your, uh, you can remove the turrets once you have it through your rifle zero to whatever distance you want, like 100, range, 100 yards, 100 meters, 200 yards, whatever uh, you're shooting with. And then you can make your click adjustments based on that. Now, the nice thing about it is obviously you can get these Vortex uh, Defender caps. You can get this little um, uh, throw lever you can get on for it. Uh, there's all sorts of different accessories for these. Honestly, for this rifle, it's my kind of my entry level build. This isn't a custom action. It's a Rem 700, you know, five R tactical action. I didn't spend two grand on just the just the kind of a clone action on it, um, and then another you know a thousand bucks for a barrel, and then five thousand for an optic. I'm not building a fifteen thousand dollar rifle here. This is a very expensive stock or a, a chassis from MDT although it is attainable at a private price point, but there's lots of different options as well for what you choose to do. So as far as kind of a, uh, a long range setup build, you know, this is in probably close to $2,000 for me. I was able to get the, the barreled action at a fairly decent price, kind of second hand from a guy who was selling it. I found a good deal. Then I got into the MBT ACC stuff and then the, um, then the, the scope and mounts and all that kind of stuff. So really at the end of the day, you can spend, you know, anywhere between 2500 to 15000 building a long-range rifle. It just depends on how much you want to invest into it. This is one of the many shooting sports that I'm involved in, so <laughs> I kind of have to pick my budget very carefully and be pretty discerning when it comes to, you know, how much money I invest in something. If this was the only thing that I did, if this is the only kind of shooting sport that I competed in, competed in then I would maybe consider investing into, in a, you know, a, a very, you know, a high-end 
long range scope, something that's built for competition, something that you know all the top guys use, then you know maybe something in the in the uh, Steiner or the Zeiss or Night Force or even the higher end Vortex stuff or loophole, you know th those or I guess even the Kales or Kales, however you actually say it. Um, that's something that you would consider if you're going down there, and this is exclusively the only thing that you do. You're a bolt, bolt gunner, a bolt action guy, uh, competing kind of PRS and NRL cell competitions, then fantastic. For me, I wanted to get into the PRS stuff, so that's why I built this rifle, something to try out, and if I don't like it, I always figured I could either part it out or sell it as a complete setup if I didn't really enjoy it or didn't get into it. So that's kind of what I did. That's why I chose this Vortex Diamond, Diamondback Tactical. For the price, I don't think you can spend your money and get a better deal. The value is incredible. It's a fantastic, um, fantastic uh, scope. I've The optics are clear. It's very good eye relief. Uh, like I said, the only thing it doesn't have is kind of like a true zero stop and a, um, an illuminated reticle. But at this point, I don't feel like I need that. I've shot hundreds of rounds through this thing. I've never had to re-zero it or anything like that. It's like, I, I haven't shot this rifle in like six or seven months. I pulled it out of the case, out of my safe, put it in the case, threw it here in the range. I started recording. First shot, literally, I hit with my holdovers and my Kestrel wind readings. I mean, I don't know. I, I'm hitting two-inch gongs down there as well with no issues. Um, and trust me, it's not the shooter skill. I mean, the, the setup really lends itself well to, to shooting really accurately. And I don't, uh, I don't shoot that often with this. I mean, the trigger is an amazing trigger. It's a trigger tech uh, special. I couldn't put the diamond in this because uh, the diamond can only go into the clone actions. It cannot work on actual Remington 700 actions because of the uh, the, the, um, the safety and uh, sorry the, the the bolt release catch it doesn't uh, doesn't lend itself to the Remington 700 action. So I'm hoping they fix that at some point. But you know what? This special adjusts down to like a pound pull or pound and a half or something. I think it's like eight ounces is the minimum. So. That's half a pound down you can go. That, that's pretty good. I mean, I don't know if I'd ever want anything lighter than that. I know some guys talk about, uh, like, you know, two-ounce pulls and crazy. That's crazy. I don't know. I'm, I'm sure it's great for them. I've never had the need to go that light. But, uh, yeah, that's basically, uh, that's basically the setup.